since we are in the wee hours of January 2nd, well, yeah, we're, it's uh, six hours and ten minutes into the day. And I'm just finishing up the vlog. This is the third and final segment. We're uh, close, ending the vlog for um, Friday, uh, January 1st. It is 2021. And um, I have to get used to saying that uh, because when we're ending the vlog, so we're kind of behind uh, in our vlog edits. We're just now entering December in terms of the editing. So we're getting into vlog mess. It's going to be an extended one all the way till February 1st. Uh, because uh, it's going to include the uh, Eastern Christmas as well, which in the Eastern Christmas is uh, significantly longer than the Western one is. So, Anyways, uh, people are, are talking about the New Year's and uh, the on the vlogs and on the, on the YouTube stroll that I could do. Uh, the YouTube stroll is my regular thing. That's what I do on a regular basis. And almost every channel that I've been lo looking at in terms of talking about the end of the year, they always talk about chronic gas, the whole uh, pandemic, the crisis, the fear that's going on. And so, of course, uh, they talk about the rules and everyone's got their masks. And what's happening now is the set of uh, getting better, things are getting worse. And uh, people are, are in a heightened state of panic and they're tightening things up. And although the reality is far from uh, what the panic is. So, anyways... There is a condition where, I, in some cases, I do need to go to uh, to uh, sort of don the mask, but uh, I don't have a mask, so this is what is done. From where, I, from my culture, is you've put this on like so. This is what the terrorists all wear. You cover up your mouth like this. You open up the eyes, and there you go. You now have a mask just for temporary use. Now, this is all the rage with the terrorists and <laughs> so on and so forth. So, I'm pretty sure that it's going to cause some degree of concern. But, uh, hey, I'm not the one who made the rules. So. <clears throat> And the whole the whole term Allah Akbar, all it means God is great. So that's the, that doesn't mean anything else other than that. But of course, it's always used in the phrase in the context when when uh, uh, there are those of the mind who believe in a military God, a militant God, a vengeful God, where they're about to blow something up and then they say Allah Akbar. Okay, yeah, <laughs> God is great. God is good. And, you know. You know and uh, and uh, up you go, I guess you know type of thing, but that's not my type. Of, that's not my style. But the thing is, is a lot of people, most people don't see past the headlines. Most people don't know anything outside of what they're told on the radio and on what the news is. They don't follow anything else. They don't sort of dig into anything deeper or, or anything more significant than that. As it, most people leave, live a very shallow and very, in many ways, empty life. Uh, they will go to work on a daily basis. They earn their money. And at a certain point in time, the money is taken from them by the government. By the uh, bullies, by the parasites who uh, think that they are better than we are. And they need to tell us how to resolve, how to, how to, how to live our lives, how much toilet paper you can use, what type of light bulbs you can have, uh, the type of car you can drive, the type of house you can have, or where you can live, where you can't live, uh, because uh, you, you just, you just, it's not one of them, you know. And then uh, these people stand up and say they talk about the philanthropy, the love of men, and they talk about equality. Well, well quality for, equality for who, according to what standard? Your standard? Well, I'm not part of your standard. I don't want to be the way you are. I'm independent. I'm free. I, I think for myself. And that's the way things go. That's the way I like living my life. But other people don't like that. They don't want people to live their own lives. They don't want to have people 
thinking for themselves. They want to be dictating everything that somebody else does. Oh, you're not doing that? Oh, oh, you don't do it the way I do it? You're doing it wrong. Here, let me show you how to do this right. Sorry, not my cup of tea. Anyways, uh, off to 2021, which will probably, probably be very similar to 2020, although a lot of people are hoping that it's not going to be. So we're just going to ignore 2020 and just pretend it wasn't there. We're just not going to talk about it. Well, <laughs> good, <laughs> because uh, 2021 doesn't look like it's going to be any better. It'll be probably a while before we get out of the situations that we're in. There is a lot going on in the world that causes this problem. Oh, it has nothing to do with the disorder of chronic gas. You know, the great fart panic. Well, it is a panic, but, so, but that's about it. The great fat fart panic really does sum up exactly the seriousness of what's going on in terms of a medical perspective. Uh, because there's not much that's actually seriously going on. It's more of a panic. It's more uh, about about uh, government and political control, and that's that's it. So enjoy for those of you who voted this way. schedule again, but anyways, um, it is, uh, two hours and 37 minutes into the day of, uh, Sunday, Sunday, January 3rd, 2021, and, uh, well, we're starting the new year off in our typical fashion, uh, we're, we're not on time, we're not on the schedule, and, uh, things are kind of all over the place. Although you do have, I do have, have an, I did have an opportunity to do some more research and uh, develop some new insights. And that, the way things go, particularly in this world today, is that they, everyone's talking about fake news and fake this and fake that. Well, just because you have two sides to a particular story, doesn't mean that this is necessarily that both sides that are, are having the argument are correct. As a matter of fact, both sides can be wrong. This, it, it could be. Who is right, this person or that person? Well, both sides can be wrong because they didn't see the entire thing. They're working from their perspective. And this is why it's important to get more than one perspective, not, not just getting two perspectives, but, but three or four or five. But how are these, these, these people call themselves, they'll call themselves data scientists? And they say, well, well they're weird data scientists. We, we know. Why? Because you've done the mathematics. Well, well, mathematics on what? You ask them and press them for details of what they've actually done. And you read their articles. Great writing, you know, some of them is great writing, you know, long explanations. But they're only backing up their facts, their, their, their own perspective of things. As a matter of fact, in many cases, they're just completely missing the whole thing, the whole entire argument itself, not understanding that data on its own with mathematics can create hallucinations. But this is, this is, this is something that's not understood. They don't understand it. They don't understand that mathematics can create illusion, hallucinations. But they're convinced that this is the end all and be all. And of course, because they have no concept of history, these are people who are completely divorced from history, don't understand that this has been done before. So they're doing and repeating the same mistakes that they've done before. Again, this isn't science as we go, this is scientific. No, it's not a science. It's religion. These people who are on the left who talk about these different things and talk about data, talk about the science and so on and so forth, they're religious. They are the religious right. Why? Because science stands outside of reality. It is their belief that this is working. They have their saints, they have their apostles, they have their church. They have everything that the religious right do, including a belief in what they're saying, a belief in their morality, a, be a belief in their ideas. And that does not necessarily mean that they're, they're, they are correct. 
And you know, one of the, the one of the things, if you want to put go back into calculus, is use calculus as a basic argument. Well, what is why is calculus our basic argument? Because calculus tells us that we can never, through any form of mathematical means, if you're using calculus, it can never come to an exact proof because there is no exact proof in calculus. Calculus is always built on the fractional knowledge. It is a fractional mathematics that 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 where you accumulate to a limit, not to the actual point, but to a limit, sufficiently close to an asymptotic point, a point that can never be reached, a point that's infinite in, in, in its actual distance from you, where you can say that this is sufficient, I've done sufficient work, and this is good enough. So you're never actually approving anything. You're actually simply, with calculus, you are simply approximating. Yet there are many out there who will sit down and go, well, I'm a data scientist, what do you do? We did sat down, they show you a great, a great calculus equation. Not understanding that the fundamentals, the basis of calculus at all, the, ba the basis of calculus itself, contradicts any degree of proof. You cannot prove things with calculus. Calculus was never designed as a mathematics of proof. It was a, cal it was a mathematics of approximation, a, math a, a mathematics of fractional knowledge. This is this is what calculus was designed to. This was uh, Newton's understanding. This was Leibniz's understanding, or Leibniz, however you want to pronounce his, his name. This was this was their understanding of things. Yet today we see we, 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 these data scientists being paraded around as something special. As these are the people who know the truth, but well, they don't know the truth. They have a version of the truth. They have their perception and they can great do all these great mathematical calculations but that's not a proof and you see this over and over again we're, we're working to find you know fake news and fake information and this and that and it doesn't matter what information you actually put in front of them as long as they're seeing their data and they, their data is adjusted the way they think it should be adjusted by their own equations they will refuse to see images right in front of them based on, on camera. They'll simply ignore it because it's not part of their data set. And they never consider anything outside of their data set. Their data set is the absolute truth, is the only truth, and is the only thing they consider or, or see. That's not open-minded. That's not testing things out to the nth degree. I mean, consider this for a minute. And again, if a data scientist walked into a, a situation where you're talking about the creation of the universe and, and the structure of the universe, well, you'd run into the data scientist ran into a problem where they try to calculate, uh, you know, the structure of the universe. We've got powerful enough computers; we can model in the we can model these things in the computer. We do a computer model, just the way they did for the environment. They did for all these other different things. COVID is that's why you have the COVID projections, the the the, the well, it's called chronic gas projections. Why do you have a chronic ga gas projections? Why do you have these these projections? Because there's mathematical models behind them. And these mathematical models, oh, we've got powerful enough computers. Well, here's a problem. When they did the work on structuring the universe, and they tried to measure what they saw on the Hubble Space Telescope, they didn't have enough. They didn't have enough math, and of course, because you don't have enough math. You have to add in energy. As they started adding in mass and energy, the only way they can get their their, their, their equations to work is to realize that they had to put in, you know, an extra ninety five percent mass. In other words, the majority of the mass that you're seeing in terms of any form that in terms of the visible universe is maybe five percent of what's actually there. So, if your absolute limit in terms of knowledge, in terms of what you can actually see based on these models of of dark matter and dark energy. If your total is 5%, in other words, 95% of the universe is dark energy and dark matter, then your absolute total proof, the, the approximate that you can reach in its totality, in its totality, is only 5%. Do you feel confident in making a proclamation Oh, there is no God. Science says it. Well, science says we only only can see 5% of the universe. 
So that means your limit, your upper upper limit, is only five percent, assuming you know the entire universe. But we don't know the entire universe. We can barely get outside of our solar system. So we are well beneath the five percent of the entire visible universe. Yet there are people out there saying, well, science has debunked, and science does this, and science does that. Well, take take their take their understanding the use of science and replace it with God. God does this, and God does that, and this and that. It's religion. It's not what people say it is. And this, and this is why you'll see in the left the mirror image of the religious right. Because the left and these data scientists are religious people. They are part of the religious right. It's just they don't necessarily believe in God. They don't believe in the same things that we believe in. They have these alternative ideas, these alternative beliefs, and that's how they function. There's the bus. Well, this is going to have to do for now, but this is the setup for where the laundry is. Um, uh, hang, hanging up some of the laundry that just came out of the washing machine. It is uh, three hours and 51 minutes into the fourth day of uh, January uh, 2020. And I don't put clothes up necessarily right away. I'm just going to hang this on the edge here until I figure out where I want it, want it to go. So that's the, what happens. It, uh, this is the mundane. This is uh, doing laundry at 4 o'clock in the morning. I was able to get... Uh, I was able to get two loads done. And that's that's why I got the sort of the, se the second the second dryer here. I have one dryer already loaded. And this is the second uh this is uh the second dryer that I'm loading now. Trying to sort of see how everything is going to go. It does take a while to sort of figure out how you want to load this. Uh, because it's not a tumble dryer and it hang dries, uh, it doesn't wrinkle the way it usually uh, clothing tends to wrinkle. And at the same time, it comes out uh, nice, nice and smooth. But you do have to organize how you're going to do the actual uh, hanging of the clothes. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing that amount of organization. I'm catching up on the videos in terms of that I publish uh, to YouTube. That's getting caught up on. Okay, this is going to need a hanger. That's good. Thicker clothing need hangers, uh, and they need more space to dry. And so that's what you're going to kind of figure out how everything's going to hang, how it's going to uh, go in in terms of the spacing. Once you've got that done, it's pretty much easy.
I think this will, this will probably take me a total of not even 10 minutes to do. It's been three, three, four minutes so far, so it's not that bad. And I'm even doing heavy laundry, uh, like a jacket or a hoodie, can be done. You try it one way to see how it fits, and then if, it if you don't like the way it fits, you try a second way. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just fitting this in here. So that it's balanced. And there should be enough of a flow. Within the system, within the system that uh, everything dries, uh, typically about six to eight hours. But typically, if you're hang drying, it would take longer to do that. Uh, it took you a couple of days before just on the hang drying. Good. Now for the pants. Getting near the end. Not so bad. Well, so I'm on my last piece here. There's the sheet. So I can do towel, sheets, heavy jackets, uh, a full load.
And there we go. And uh, what I'll be doing now is getting uh, the bounty sheets, the uh, the dryer sheets. They still work in here. They give you a good fragrance, uh, prevent static clinging. Away you go. Well, uh, that's it for uh, uh, the weekend video. Uh, things have gone pretty well. I'm happy with it. This is hanging laundry. I know laundry is not exciting to do, but uh, has to be done.